Good afternoon and welcome to you from Twickenham for the last time this season. The grand finale of the season in England, the Seven Prosper Middlesex Sevens, which this year has a new improved format. Sixteen sides taking part, including eight First Division clubs and two guest sides, Borough Muir from Scotland and Western Samoa, who distinguished themselves in the Hong Kong Sevens last month. Unfortunately, the monsoons which swamped that tournament have come over here. It was teeming earlier on in the day, so how would the Western Samoan cope in their opening tie against London Welsh. The answer was very well indeed after an uncertain start with London Welsh completely dominating the first half. Then Western Samoa settled in the second half with Tua Tangaloa scoring the first of their three tries, all of which were converted by Fallon Gow. And so Western Samoa through to the last eight and this the quarter-final draw we are now going to concentrate on the first of those quarter-final ties between Harlequins, five times winners in the last six years and comfortable winners over Gloucester, and Roslyn Park, who were run close by Askeans. We join the tie in extra time, 12 all, it's sudden death. Our commentators this afternoon, Nigel Starmer-Smith and first of all, Bill McLaren. Eagle kicks through, back goes Mantell. Mantell has Rolf Stratford alongside him, inside his own 22. Decides to give it out to Paul Roblin. Roblin hands off Luxon. Simon Hunter has a chance. He ignored the uh, overlap outside him. That's the kick on by Jeff Alexander. That's the crucial try, but the referee is bringing them back. Jeff Alexander controlled it well, but the ball had gone forward. It wasn't an advantage situation. And so Rushman Park get the put in. This is where it all happened. Yes, it was a, it was that knock forward by Alexander, first of all. So, Rosalind Park survive. Two minutes of extra time played. Now, this is the last thing those players want out there. They'll be, they get to the final, they play 62 minutes. This is all extra. Look at Sheesby again, putting in a tremendous bust. So Sheesby has been a key man here as Alexander switches. Alexander, Glenister, Glenister goes. That's the crucial try. Joy unconfined by Rob Glenister, whose try in extra time takes Harlequins through to the semi final. And it was the switch by Jeff Alexander that made it. And then Glenister hesitated just enough to beat the tackle. He enjoyed the dive as well. So nip and tuck for Harlequins, first through to the semi-finals, the next quarter-final tie, Orl against Western Samoa. Tolafa, chance here for Vitali. Vitali going all the way, can he make it? Gets past the and win, crowd love that one. Angar Vitali, one of the new players, just 21-year-old, this scrum half, gives Western Samoa the lead. Great sprinting by the youngster. Rounds Ian Wynn, keeps his feet just, and that will give them good heart. Tolefa. Oh, it's a clear run up the middle. Covered though, Farmgali, Tolefa. Little show of the ball, has he got the legs? He's looking very tired, but he's actually uh, deceiving all, just coasting home. And Kalolo Tolefa, one of the key men in the Hong Kong uh, tournament, adds to the try he scored against London Welsh in the opening round. And takes Western Samoa, 10 points clear. Much better possession in this tie. He looked to be struggling there. Hater gaining on him, but uh, he was kidding us all. So the popular visitors to start this second half and raising a lot of funds in aid of the ravaged, devastated country which suffered the uh, Hurricane Val, and that will cheer them. Vitali really making certain with that score. He doesn't run it over the dead ball line.
21 year old scrum half from the Viala club and one of the many new faces I'm sure part of the building process towards the next 15 aside World Cup and here good pace from the small man Vitali. The Western Samoans beginning to turn it on. They ran out winners 26-6 and are into the semi-finals along with Harlequins. Next quarter-final between Boroughmuir and Bath. It was delicately poised going into the closing stages. Boroughmuir leading 12-10. Walker then. Very good kick, but again in comes Clark. Nicely taken by Gareth Adams. He's well tackled by Stevie Douglas. Got the ball away to Saunders. Along the line to Sparks. Sparks, oh and Sparks has broken the tackle of Duncan McRae and Bath are going into the lead, chased all the way there by Scott McLean but the broken tackle was the one that did it and Martin Sparks who came on as a replacement uh, after the first round has scored a vital try and once again virtually from the kickoff. and notice how there Duncan McRae just couldn't hold on to him and Sparks was in the clear and he needed no other invitation to keep his legs going there. Such an onus here on Barry Brown, who is the normal hooker for Baramir, used to play for Edinburgh Academicals. Notice how well positioned he is, and it's a lovely ball. Murray Walker from Hall, out to McRae. McRae the kick through, and McRae, if he controls this one, he could tie the score, and he has. So Duncan McRae, for the second time, has managed to score. A dribble try, if you like, or rather a hack and chase try. But it was very well thought out. Ball beautifully won at the scrummage. Then notice how he saw the gap, placed the ball very nicely. This was the vital point here. If he'd overkicked it there, it was gone, but he didn't. And it's four points. And so they're all square. Almost into the last minute. Hall getting a lovely ball from Brown. A high kick from Murray Walker. It was meant for Scott McLean. And Scott McLean getting back there. Gareth Adams is back there. And there is a chance for Scott McLean if he can control it. And he has. The youngster, the 21-year-old, has scored a vital try. His second try of the tie as well. And it was a beautifully placed kick. Gareth Adams did so well to get back, but he just lost control of it. And the youngster made a good catch and dotted down. So, a last gasp win for the second of the two guest sides, Borough Muir, and they're now into the semi-finals along with Harlequins and Western Samoa. The last of the quarter-finals next between Wasps and the holders, London Scottish. Russell. Trying to build it up out of their 22. This is Withers Green. This uh, experienced seven who already won the Worthington National Sevens and now chasing away Appleson. Four tries in the last round. And that's the opener in the quarter-final. Mark Appleson, one of the stars of uh, last year's winning seven. And showing tremendous speed here and adding to his tally for the day already his fifth try Appleson well set to Kevin Troop only one man to cover is Hopley and Troop just glides inside him as the rain descends once more but the skies are clear at this stage for London Scottish. Kevin Troop takes his time and makes sure he brings Wasps all the way back. So a confident, uh, you might almost say a cocky looking side this. Kevin Troop, you may remember he came in only last year when Nick Grecian was injured and what a marvellous tournament he had. And here's a bit of uh, arrogance, you might say. And this, of course, the last day in England that you'll see uh, a four-point try. Wasps need at least five for theirs. They're going to get one here. 
Scrace tears home. Worth four points. And keeps them in the hunt. And important for them, scoring there just in the nick of uh, time before the half-time whistle. 12-4, it could be 12-6. And now we're getting another of those Hong Kong-like deluges. Rain prevented any more scoring. London Scottish winning 12-6 and going through to the last four to meet their compatriots, Borough Muir. So to the first of the semi-finals, Harlequins who have so dominated this event in recent years against Western Samoa on their first appearance. Harlequins an experienced seven relying very much on Harriman's pace against a Western Samoan side young but immensely talented and improving with every round. So referee Nick Cousins gives the scrummage on the Quins 22. Lannister to feed. Another who's been through... Uh, three finals in Harlequin colours. Harriman under a lot of pressure. Glenister in support. And of course, a game where support is such a key element. Samoa from the halfway through Tolefa. Good work. And all the way on the break. Il Paley, the scorer, the captain. So they've improved, as I was saying, as this tournament has uh, proceeded. Lovely handoff after the initial bust of the tackle, and Malaki Uyopeli, the 26-year-old captain and flanker in this Western Samoa lineup, gives the underdogs the first score. Kali Fangali. Good kick. Four minutes played. And what a good start by Samoa. So the gauntlet thrown down by the young Samoans to the side who won between 86 and 91, a record five times in a row, before conceding second best to the uh, remarkable London Scottish performance last year. Harlequins then, not getting a, a surfeit of possession and certainly finding life uncomfortable. And here's a possible three to two. And again, it's Yu Paley, the captain, by example, to Tolia Fur. It's a good pick up by Angali. Upele again to Atalala. Vitali. Vitali has he the pace? The chase is on. Glenister across. But Vitali is home. What a score by Western Samoa. The 21 year old scrum half outstrips them all. And suddenly the Harlequins look short of pace. By design or chance, they seeming to be attacking against the Harlequins where their powerful runners are not. And it's paying off superbly well. And they've come to life in this tie and they lead the much vaunted Harlequin seven, 10 points to nil. This was Vitali's storming run. Trickenham ground, he got three conversions in the first tie and he's really never looked back and takes Western Samoa 12-0 ahead and we're still in the first period, about a minute to go. And as uh, play restarts, on comes Taputaya Melasia for the injured Imo Tuatangaloa. So, a number 10 in place of number 9. 
So under pressure, there are errors, unforced, that are marring the Harlequins' performance. Having uh, won well against Gloucester and a very tight tie, though, against Roslyn Park. It seems to have taken its toll, that uh, quarter-final tie. As yet, not impressive. And Samoa in control, 12-0. Not releasing as Samoa come over. Desperate for a score now, Harlequins, as we come into injury time at the end of this first period. Well set out by Eagle and a chance now for Alexander. That's the first one back. And Alexander, the youngster, finally opens the Harlequins' account. Well set away by uh, Eagle here. Eagle who came in late for Kent Bray. And Alexander for Will Carling. And the pair working in concert together to good effect. Rob Glenister. Important kick that puts Quinns within uh, six points. A converted try of Western Samoa at the interval as the sun breaks through after the downpour. So Glenister, Eagle waits outside him. Again, problems at the set piece. Eagle now. Quinn's having to retreat to regain momentum and regain possession. And this time Eagle penalised. Western Samoa. Side who had such a wonderful time on the 15 a side tour and the World Cup. Good pick up though by uh, Luxton. And now to Alexander. Alexander against Malassia. The great cover defensive tackle that was, tremendous effort, and the counter-attack now. The crowd on their feet as Western Samoa come again, and they've outstripped the Harlequin defence. Eagle in desperation, Eagle in desperation, but it's all the way of Fangal Ghali. Tremendous score to thrill the crowd and bring despair to Harlequins with a minute and a half to go. Pasikali Faungali really had to dig deep on his reserves. Eagle, brave defensive effort, couldn't make it in time. And the try, surely, that takes Western Samoa on their first visit here to the final itself. attempting to convert his own dramatic try. One minute to go of this tie. Fangali safe. And now a clear 12 points. Well nigh impossible for a Harlequins to come back with two converted tries in the space of some uh, 40 seconds or so. So I think we've seen the uh, effects of that grueling extra time tie against Roslyn Park take its toll. Because it's the Western Samoans who've looked the fresher and the Harlequins have just uh, seemingly run out of steam against a side that has got progressively better with each round of this tournament. And they come yet again through Malasia. by uh, the ever-alert Eagle. Eagle eyes, I guess. Harriman, Winterbottom, Luxton. But it may be just consolation here. Harriman steps out of the tackle. Never really set up to use the tremendous speed. I think the fastest winger in British rugby, Harriman, but really never fully exploited 
as the Western Samoans closed Harlequins down sufficiently to deny them as we now move into injury time at the end. Why the delay? I'm not sure because it's uh, Glenister who puts it over and it's all too late for Harlequins and Western Samoa popular victors in this semi-final. This young side of largely new internationals, just the one, for instance, who came through via the Hong Kong Sevens, Tolia Foa, but a tremendous performance by them to be, defeat one of the real sides of acknowledged experts of the seven-a-side game. 18 points to 12 and carry themselves into the final. What a moment then for Western Samoa to reach the final on their first appearance and to do it in such style. London Scottish have proved themselves masters of the sevens game over the years, but they should be tested in their semi-final against Borough Muir. In Mark Appleson, London Scottish have a potential match winner, but Borough Muir's forward strength has been an important factor in their success so far. We join the tie in the first half. There's no score. Russell feeding out to Harold. There's a great burst here by Walker. Walker, this big, long, striding forward. He's got Troop outside him, and he had Appleson inside him but Troop weaving away this is Appleson now Appleson going for the corner very good tackle indeed by Duncan McRae but the try is given he just made it and it was a great bit of support work Mark Appleson the banana man they call him but it all started with the breakout by Andrew Walker this big long striding forward notice he looked to make sure that he was bracketed one on each side gave it to kevin troop and then appleson cleverly looping troop this is the important bit well his feet uh, seemed to be over the line before he dotted down but the touch judge was there and the referee was there four points so are we out there on the uh our touchline is Carsten Russell. He and uh, Fraser Harold have been sharing the uh, goal kicking duties. Four minutes gone already of this uh, seven minutes each way tie. Just uh, the, the hold up is simply for this injury to Duncan McRae, the 22 year old who was injured in the tackle on uh, Mark Appleson. Duncan McRae, fullback in the 15, and has played for Scotland at all levels, right from under 18 up to under 21. Duncan McRae uh, is on the Cambridge University bench in 90 for the varsity match. And now the kick given to Carson Russell because he's the left footer, and from the right touchline, he should be able to draw this in from the left-hand post as he looks at it. He's certainly got plenty of height on it. Just dropping short, it was a very good kick. And so with over five minutes played, it's 4-0 for the holders. Crowd really basking in sunshine now. It's been one of those kind of days, on and off as it were, but uh, a joyous scene here. Murray Walker. Morrison Waits. See how the Scottish very quickly get the ball out wide. But there, Fraser Harold with the break, the standoff half. And again, it was Appleson coming up and taking the short ball and going straight for the post, chased all the way by Mike Hall. But that is another very good try indeed by the uh, Anglo-Scots. Mark Appleson is what? He's scored seven tries now in three outings. He had four against Leicester. And uh, it was the breakout initially by Harold. Now watch how Appleson took his angle so close to Harold, going absolutely dead straight. And, well, nobody really got near him. Mike Hall tried, couldn't make it. Fraser Harold, the right-footed kicker. Making sure... And uh, he's done pretty well, that's his fourth conversion, he had a try earlier on as well. It's 10-0 and uh, they're almost up to the break.
The Buttermuir have done extremely well to get to the semi-final. They uh, certainly made no great impression on the Scottish border circuit over the last uh, five weeks. Murray Walker. Nicely taken by Mike Hall. Feeding outside to Jerry Driver. He's opened out, but uh, Withers Green was there. Back there goes McRae. Nicely to Stevie Douglas. Stevie Douglas on halfway. And the London Scots who uh, have learned in this short game the art of ball winning. They, uh, they're just outstanding exponents. And one feature, of course, is their tremendous fitness uh, to which they owe a great deal to Margot Wells, the uh, wife of Alan Wells, the Olympic sprint champion, who has had so much to do with uh, their fitness training. Murray Walker, McLean to Murray Walker, but it's intercepted by Troop, and Troop is away. And that, uh, well, that may well tie it up for the London Scots. It was just a little move that went wrong, and Kevin Troop, who, remember, came on last season and got through uh, and uh, was in the winner's team. And uh, Murray Walker here out to McLean, and then it was that loose pass which Troop exploited so quickly. He was through the gap and away, and that was it. No fool back to stop him there. So the whistles you go for half time, as Kevin Troop suggests there that he might uh, have sustained an injury. And this time, Mark Appleson, the goal kicker. Referee's whistle goes for half time, 16 points to nil, London Scottish, very much in the saddle. Murray Walker gets the second half going for Boromir, who once won the Melrose Tournament in 1976 with 122 points in four ties. But here, very much up against it, 16 points adrift as McRae goes back there. His pass misses Barry Brown, who'd covered so well. And Brown trying to stay in his feet, but hustled over there by three of the London Scots inside his own 22. And it'll be a penalty also for uh, holding on, although... <laughs> What Barry Brown could have done in the circumstances uh, is open to some question. Carson Russell is going to take the tap penalty. Along the line there again to Appleson, that's a switch to Troop, Troop on to Harold. And Jerry Driver are just knocking it forward. And <laughs> he would have enjoyed that, Jerry Driver. He's in his... Uh, He's over 30 now, been a great servant to the Boromir club, played for them in every row of the scrimmage in 15s. And uh, I'd love to have seen him with about 60 metres to go there. However, it's to Harold, Appleson, Walker, Troop is there, Morrison cutting back, big heavy forward, he's played for the Anglo-Scots. Now it's Barry Brown tackled by Morrison, and now out from Murray Walker there to Driver. Driver up, who kicked ahead earlier on in one of the early ties and produced a try. There, a very good follow-up tackle indeed. And Stevie Douglas in on the tackle. The bottom here could just get a try and a conversion here. It might lift them a little bit. Murray Walker is the one liable to do it. This is McLean. McLean half through. Youngster is away. But his pass goes to Withers Green. Murray Walker is there. Whistle had gone. Just the knock forward. Nobody prepared to question Roger Quittenden's refereeing. Uh, the most experienced referees in the uh, world game today. It was the put into the London Scots, who were uh, very much to their advantage. This strike usually goes with the put in. Uh, Sevens and uh, there Harold opening right out to Appleson away out on there in the wing and he's got Troop outside him. This is Troop. Back inside nicely to Fraser Harold and Harold can go as well but it's a marvellous positioning off the ball. You see here they are Morris and the forwards joining in with us Green now. Out to Walker and again their fitness enabling them to get behind the ball carrier so that there's always somebody in position. 
That's the knock-on by Fraser Harold. Seen the Fijians do that at Hong Kong Sevens to devastating effect a couple of years ago. Withers Green is going there to Kevin Troop, and Kevin Troop can saunter home. The only fellow who will catch him is Roger Quittenden. Kevin Troop with his fourth try of the afternoon, and that ties it up surely for the London Scots. Now about to enter their 14th Middlesex final, and uh, Kevin Troop, a uh, former pupil of Gordon's College up in Aberdeen. Uh, and you could see here that uh, Withers Green made the initial dent and then uh, the pass took out the man and Kevin Troop saw there was no more defence left and it was just a nice quiet stroll. 20 points to nil. Carson Russell with two more points. And so it's uh, out of sight now for London Scottish who, uh, well, will face the daunting task of taking on the Western Samoans in the final. And Russell's kick charged down by Mike Hall. Murray Walker, you can see how tired the fellas are getting now after a long, long season. This really is tough going. Walker still. Got the ball well away to Stevie Douglas. Stevie Douglas, uh, well, over... Uh, Held there by Appleson, but it's a breakaway for Duncan McRae, and he certainly deserves that try. He came very close to one earlier, and a great cheer for Boramur, who uh, are going to lose this semi-final, but who've scored a very good try indeed. Just support work here that did it. There was the uh, support and the one pass that took out everybody else and left Duncan McRae with the clear run. And he's how fit Roger Quittenden and he's beat up with every scorer. Cheeky little kick through by Fraser Harrell. So Mike Hall, the scrum half with the goal kicking duties this time. And uh, box it over, no bother. So he opens his account as well. The referee's whistle goes for the end of the tie. And London Scottish handsome winners by 22 points to six qualify to meet Western Samoa in the final. So, London Scottish through to their second final in a row, and I don't think there's much doubt that the two most accomplished sides in the tournament will be contesting this year's final. So, referee Chris Rees gets ready to start this 67th final of this great Middlesex tournament, featuring the holders London Scottish in their 14th final, against the cheery citizens from the South Pacific, Western Samoa. London Scottish to get the game started through Mark Appleson. Ten minutes each way as the clouds uh, come overhead and rain threatens, but uh, to London Scottish there through Russell. Appleson out to Troop. Troop uh, caught there initially by Melissae. Fraser Harrell trying to work it clear, but you can see the uh, Samoans as they did in the World Cup intimidating in a way in the ferocity of their tackling it's very fair but it's very physical indeed the penalty then and Carson Russell about to take it the man his uh, pals call Starfish played for the students in the World Cup in 88 but again this crunching tackling and it can really upset sides Withers Green back in his own 22 lovely pick up there by Vitali long pass out there to Fawangali the young standoff half he feeds to Vaisuai, and Vaisuai is clear. The first try of the final. Alifayo Vaisuai, his third try of the tournament, and first blood to the Samoans. It looked so innocuous at first, the pass in there from Faung Galley, and then Vaisuai, who's been hooking for them this afternoon, showed a clean pair of heels. And the Samoans, uh, with that 4-0 lead after just... Well, hardly a minute and a half. I think, Bill, you hit the nail on the head, the physical impact. They may be slight of build, but the impact of their tackling is quite staggering at times. I think it stunned London Scottish initially, as it stunned so many before. And so it's Farn Gally who gave the scoring pass for the try, who converts, and it's six points to nil. What a start for the Samoans, who are so popular here here on a fundraising trip for their Cyclone Val Disaster Fund. Disaster that caused something like 
devastation to the tune of $600 million. And here, with the crowd support as well, as they had in so many of their matches of the World Cup. And as I speak, the rain uh, starts cascading down again as Mark Appleson gets the game restarted. And there goes Ayopelli, the captain, then along the line up to Vaisuai. Vaisuai's pass sent him away, and Vaisuai is going to score a second try, and that is a remarkable effort by him. Those youngsters in the Western Samoan side have gained in confidence with every tie and they've proved that every one of them can score from long range just as happened here I mean this was a long long run he had to do but uh, Alefayo Vaisuai had no problems whatever and with support there on the inside another superb bit of running 28 year old flanker there who's very experienced in sevens 10 points margin. Van Galli does the needful again, his ninth conversion of the afternoon. It was such a beautiful pass out there. And there was this, just a suggestion of a half dummy by Vaishuai before he took off. But as you can see, those fellas can all run in from halfway if they have to puts one in mind of that uh, World Cup joke about it's a good job it, it's not the whole of Western, uh, the whole of Samoa that are playing uh, incredible speed and to think that these are youngsters coming through well certainly the uh, current holders of the Russell Cargill Trophy are up against it here London Scottish as they start off again from Mark Appleson and they really need to get into the tie very quickly indeed but here the breakout again but the referee had seen the forward pass loud booing from the crowd because uh, they're all in support of those youngsters well uh, sometimes I wish I did but but a real opportunity here now for London Scottish they'll want to score direct from this scrummage just to remind themselves of uh, of how to do it notice the Samoan backs lying very flat with the uh, with the scrummage that kind of intense pressure they've put on opponents. This is Fraser Harold. There is a slight overlap here as Appleson goes. Appleson going outside his man out to Troop. Troop hounded all the way by Melesia there. Papulai Melesia. There he is, the 18-year-old, uh, the youngest member of the party who came on as a replacement in the semi-final for uh, Tua Tangaloa. and Scottish with the penalty from Carson Russell to Harold. Yes, Walker was coming in on the bus, but he uh, couldn't control it, and this is the counter-attack coming from the Samoans. Loose ball, but gathered in by Melissa. The pick-up and feed from Russell. Russell to Morrison. And London Scottish fighting hard to uh, hold on to the Russell Cargill trophy. Remember how... Uh, handsomely the one in the closing seconds of the final against Harlequins last season and with uh, the same seven but uh, for one change and that's Carson Russell at scrum half for David Millard lovely healing by Withers Green Harold along the line to Appleson Appleson to Troop Troop again the thumping tackle and there the lovely pass to Tolia Foa Great support work there as it comes out once again to Vaisuai. Vaisuai to the captain, Ayopeli. He's a big, powerful fellow, but well tackled there by Walker. Pick up by Ian Morrison, the dummy of the feed initially. Then it's Harold. Now it's Carson Russell. Passes forward. There is this remarkable quality to their tackling and it reminds me very much of what happened in the Hong Kong Sevens and how New Zealand were knocked out of their stride just by being bundled over so hard so often. Even the All Blacks, however, Vitali, the little scrum half penalised for a squint feed. And once more, it's Russell. They played uh, almost seven minutes. That's the switch to Troop. On there to Fraser Harold. 
But uh, the ball very slippery now, of course, because uh, you see it's really very wet indeed. But the crowd has stayed on, uh, close on 45, 50,000 here. And uh, they've thoroughly enjoyed the type of rugby football played by both those sevens. London Scottish in their 14th final, they've won seven. The pick up by Carson Russell again. And all kinds of mistakes being made. Of course, uh, when you get tackling that is as fearsome as that of the Western Samoans, it stands to reason that occasionally you'll get a head lifted and a ball will go astray. been using uh, Vice Suai, the 28-year-old, as their hooker. And there's a little kick through. And back there goes Ian Morrison. But there is a rare chance here. And did Morrison beat him to it? It was Malasia. And the try has been given, a penalty try, for deliberately pushing off the ball. Ian Morrison penalised. Malasia, the wing, was the man who was in front here as the little kick went through. His control wasn't perfect, but it was reasonable. And then at that situation, well, shoulder to shoulder, the law talk show. Absolutely. A shoulder charge is fair. And that was a shoulder charge, surely. So I think the referees have done Western Samoa, referees done Western Samoa a favour and uh, unlucky on London Scottish. It's still four points and uh, Malasia will claim it, although it goes down as a penalty try. And there, Fangaloa, who's, uh, or rather, Faungali, who's converted almost everything he's struck this afternoon. They've, I think they've missed only one conversion. But you can see here, it was that beautiful little kick through, initially by Faungali, and then the wing Malasia coming up. Just watch it here. Well, it looked reasonably fair to me, shoulder to shoulder. The referee decided otherwise, Chris Rees. And so it's 18 points to nil. Who would have believed it when Western Samoa was struggling to get through against London Welsh in the first tie? Mark Appleson restarts. Just a metre short. But through there went uh, Ayupeli, the captain, and he won the ball for them. In comes uh, Found Galley, but the ball was knocked forward. So we've almost played the 10 minutes of the first half. Ball hadn't gone 10 metres of kick-off, and so the Samoans take the scrummage. Scrummage hasn't done badly either, of course. They've got a very big man in the captain, Ayupeli, there. Fraser Harold with the pick-up, but it had gone round 90 degrees. Because the law says you're not really supposed to deliberately twist the scrummage like that, but uh, it's very difficult sometimes for the referee to decide who's doing it. Bit of pushing off the ball there. And a penalty going to be taken by Malaki Ayupili. There he goes, the big man. Then the switch to Vaisuai. Missed out everybody. Malasia hasn't got it. But the replacement Malasia has. And you see they've all got this blistering pace. It has been a feature. They seem to lack confidence in their first tie. But uh, they've gathered in stature and confidence throughout the tournament. And now at half-time, they're leading London Scottish by 18 points to nil. And so we have the usual uh, one-minute break at the interval, which is in contrast to a lot of other seven-a-sides, but uh, I suppose the thing that people will talk about most of all will be the penalty try that was awarded. Certainly it was a beautiful kick through there by Fong Galli, and Malasia did have a head start. His control of the ball wasn't awfully good, but at this point here, Ian Morrison, well, he did shove him away, and it depends on how you read the law. That apart, how can one possibly question the, the worthiness of this lead? Uh, again, it's the intensity of the uh, pressure that they put on the opposition, and they did it here, uh, as they did in the earlier rounds, from the very start and never allowed London Scottish to develop into the stride and the fluency that characterised their earlier rounds. They are all quick and therefore they have an option of attacking on different flanks or up the middle and they're doing that and varying it. And it seems to me that they've actually nurtured one or two players who seem to now be showing their fastest form of all in this final. And that, I suppose, is all to do with 
confidence as well that was so much lacking at the beginning when as they played London Welsh as you said uh, Bill you would not have put any money on them reaching the final stages at all but they've got better the further they've gone so to the screens of old line sign the uh, Samoans get ready to start the second half referee Chris Rees uh, just checks his stopwatch and off we go Fangali with the restart kick Ian Morrison cleverly made the catch there Walker couldn't hold it and so knocked forward again and the Samoans get the put in so there's lads who got to the semi-final of both the London Floodlit Tournament and the Caldy Sevens but they've gone one better today and it might even be two better the way things are going as Malasia switches out to the captain Ayupeli Ayupeli still has it and he's got support from not another try surely from Vaisuai he feeds on there to number seven found Gali and he has scored a quite brilliant try and I think the Samoans feel that that's the one that seals it for them they haven't played even a minute of the second half the big captain Ayupeli was the man who really made it and then the support work by Vaishuai, who's already scored two tries. He handed on to Fang Gali. The knock forward was all right. The ball didn't hit the ground. Super score. You can see the little nudge forward, but as long as it doesn't hit the ground, he's OK. And so uh, Fang Gali, who scores his second try of the tournament, and he's also knocked over 10 conversions, and this could well be the 11th one. And indeed it is. And so the Samoans are virtually out of sight. Well, I think uh, we know for sure, in case anyone was still in doubt, that we have now a new force in world rugby. We saw it at the 15-a-side game. We've sensed it was coming in the sevens in Hong Kong. And for sure, they've shown today that they are, uh, as things stand at the moment, a class apart. And in those Hong Kong sevens this season, they got to the quarter final and lost to the New Zealanders by only 18-12. Appleson starts again. In comes Ayupili. Morris News worked desperately hard to win London Scottish some ball, but again it was knocked forward. And it'll be a Samoan put in. they've really put together some lovely handling rugby and uh, of course another great force of theirs is their ability to break tackles however it's out to Kevin Troop the feed on there to Appleson Appleson going for the corner trying to hand off his man Malasia was there and he was the fellow who made the crucial tackle at the corner forced Appleson to feed inside and so it's another scrimmage for the knock forward crowd of youngsters round near the pitch all the way around the ground here and a great atmosphere here as the Samoans show just how it should be done Fraser Harold however in back to Appleson with his green and the Scottish finding it hard to stitch the bits and pieces together against such sudden tackling but it's Harold once again the ground of course very slippery now and a lovely switch there from Appleson to Withers green but again, it had gone forward. And once more, it's the, the fact that the Samoans give their opponents so little time on the ball, so little reactive time. Their engagement is so quick, and it is so very powerful and physical. And that's been a key feature, as well as their ability to break tackles, most of them very powerful in thigh and hip. So that's a squint feed again, and a free kick this time, 24 points to nil. They played almost uh, four minutes of the second half. Six minutes to go. Once more, it's Fraser Harrell changing the tactic. The kick through. Appleson going for it. Can Appleson get there first? He seemed to knock it forward. He was so close. Mark Appleson looks uh, a little bit disappointed as well he might. It was a cheeky little kick through by Fraser Harrell. Now let's watch, this is the crucial bit. It was just short. Well, it's got to be the front of the body from uh, waist to neck to land on top of the ball if you want to score a try that way.
London Scottish trying to swivel that scrimmage, but the Samoans did well, really, to uh, to recover and make something of it. At least they've driven forward. But it's a penalty for pulling them all down. And no thought of kicking a penalty goal here by the Exiles. And uh, an injury to one of the Samoans. Shoulder injury, perhaps. Number three, Vaisuai, the 28-year-old flank, a very experienced in sevens. He's played at Hong Kong and the sevens here and between 88, 89, 90 and 91. And he's played in the Australian sevens as well. Bears a remarkable facial resemblance to Pat Lamb, the, uh, the great uh, Samoan and uh, New Zealand player. Walker couldn't hold it. Pick up there by Melissia. Still inside his own 22. Again, knocked forward. You'll notice the number of handling mistakes. It's just caused by the fact that the ball is now very wet and uh, so is the top of the surface. They're uh, into the last quarter of the uh, final here. And it's 24-0 for Western Samoa. Remarkable feature is how they cope in the set piece because they seem to be uh, out outweighted significantly and yet they uh, manage to get their own ball. There, they've done it again with a very good uh, a good shove. I think they owe a lot of that to their captain, uh, Malaki Ayupeli, who's captain Samoa B as well in 15s. A of Faungali who was caught there and uh, couldn't, really couldn't do anything about it. Just uh, quite rightly took the tackle. Uh, just a little bit of the sparkle has gone out of this tie. Because players very tired, they've uh, played 62 minutes of sevens rugby by the time they finish here. Nicely out to Harold. Appleson very wide indeed to Troop. Troop again caught by Melissia. Another all-embracing tackle. This is Harold going. And again, he's knocked down by Ayupili. Mark Appleson still. And so the tackles are all counting. Crosses one's mind, of course, is that Western Samoa is one of the smallest rugby nations in the world, and uh, quite a few of their top line players, a lot of them, of course, playing in New Zealand, top, some of their top line players now opting to play for the All Blacks. I hope they stay in the blue of Samoa in numbers. Good chance here, and Appleson goes out to Harold. That'll be a try for London Scottish. Fraser Harold, his second try of the afternoon, and it cuts the deficit, but I think much too late. Seven and a half minutes gone. Worked back on the Samoan side, but that uh, wild pass that the Islanders love to do occasionally gave uh, Appleson the chance to send Harold clear. And if you see it again, uh, Harold taking the ball on the bust and going very straight. The conversion kick by Carson Russell, but uh, time fading away. And, uh, Probably one of the happiest people here will be Marina Schofhausen, who is called the Iron Lady. She's the manageress of this Western Samoan side, has been at the Hong Kong Sevens as well. A 55-year-old widow who had nine children, and she's here as manageress, and she'll be enjoying every minute of it. As indeed will Taufusi Salesa, another great Sevens player who's the coach. Restart by Faung Galli. Knocked in there, uh, Ayupili going through again, but knocked forward. And we've only got about a minute and a half of the tie left, and there is the coach, Taufusi Salesa, who uh, really will be thrilled at the way his players have uh, reacted and how they've improved as they've gone along. Foot up that time against uh, Vaisuai. And London Scottish, who... They have won seven finals here. Six uh, were in six in a row in the 60s under Ian Laughlin and Jim Shackleton. And here they are still battling on, but uh, the pressure on them has been intense throughout this tie. This is Withers Green going. You see again, he was tackled, but Ian Morrison is away. He's almost up to halfway. A neat kick ahead, and uh, Faung Galli didn't try to obstruct him. Back goes the freshman, Millis here, with a beautiful pickup. The crowd loved that, and uh, there he is quite content to hoof it downfield. 
Walker. Once again, look the tackle count. So important. Harold feeding out to Withers Green. Carsten Russell going. He's a big fellow. The dummy and through and Carsten Russell. They'll have to pick his feet up. Lovely pass out there to Troop. And Troop's feet go out from underneath him. And there could be a breakaway here for Vaisuai. He's already scored a couple of tries. Is he going to get a third one? That's the feed on to the captain, Ayupeli. Ayupeli. And it could be another score for Menes here. The youngster at 18. And he's going to finish it off for Western Samoa with a remarkable try. An astonishing counter-attack try. The 18-year-old will be thrilled, one of the new internationalists. The crowd are rising to those youngsters from the South Pacific. This has been a great performance. And it was support work all the way. Ayupeli, the captain, first of all. And then the long spin pass out to uh, Melesia. And there was no catching him. Mark Appleson knew that he was home. How appropriate in the way that that youngster should have scored it because it was only uh, less than a minute ago I saw a touch of Serevi, the, the brilliant Fijian fly half as the this little 18 year old Melissa from the Mara St. Joseph Club playing for the first time for Western Samoa picked up that ball and just showed some brilliant skills of uh, a great international to be. I'm pretty sure we'll be seeing a number of those youngsters in uh, the World Cup in 1995. So away over there, Pasikali Faungali, the 26-year-old, one of the oldest in the side. Another of the new internationalists. Regular standoff half. Lifts it high enough. And straight enough. And the kicking has been quite remarkable. That's the end of the final. And Western Samoa have won a convincing victory by 30 points to six. It has been an astonishing effort by them. As we mentioned, starting off rather nervously, but gaining in stature with every tie that went on. And the fellows are absolutely delighted. They've created the same impression as their great World Cup side did over here when they beat Wales and then went up to Murrayfield. And even when they lost to Scotland in the quarter-final, they took it in the best of spirit and were singing in the dressing room afterwards. And here being cheered off the field, shoulder high, by this exuberant crowd who've rallied to them, who've given them tremendous support and uh, who've just enjoyed the superb skills that they've shown. And the replacements there who didn't get on the field, Asue and Fasua, are uh, enjoying it just as well. There, uh, Vitali, the little scrum half, who had three splendid tries during the afternoon. And wonderful scenes here. The Western Samoans can't get off the pitch to collect the trophy because the crowd have surrounded them out in the middle of the pitch. And uh, I've never seen anything like that at Twickenham before. Quite remarkable. And there the quiet coach, Taufushi Salesa, who is one of the quietest and uh, friendliest men you could come across. And quite unemotional too by the look of it. Although his players are, as you can see, there, Malasia, the little wing. And uh, they've made so many friends everywhere. It is a quite unique scene here at the headquarters of the Rugby Football Union. They're being congratulated by everybody everywhere. And the people in the stand and down in the terracing below us have risen to their feet to hail great seven-a-side champions. Western Samoa, as I say, who are over here uh, to try to boost their disaster fund the terrible typhoon that struck them a while ago and I'm sure the uh, fund will have benefited enormously and especially because of their performance here in this great tournament their first visit here the first overseas side ever to play in the Middlesex tournament and it's been going on since 1926 and here they are, the first overseas side to play and, well, they're winners at that very first attempt. It has been a magnificent performance by them. They struggled early on. They improved with every tie. Their ability to break tackles has been a feature, as indeed has their 
ability to put keen pressure on the opponent in possession. That's been a number one feature. And they certainly carry on where their World Cup side left off as the most popular visitors, the most popular of rugby players. And look at this uh, marvellous scene here of joy and satisfaction at a really good performance. And there the captain with the moustache, Malaki Ayupeli, who has toured in Queensland and Fiji and Europe and New Zealand, who played in the World Cup qualifying in Japan. But here I'm sure he's never quite experienced anything like this. And those lads will have wonderful stories to take home with them. The country, as I say, devastated by typhoon. But this surely will bring immense pleasure to all of their country folk. They can hardly get uh, up the stairs to receive the trophy. But at last they've made their way to uh, oceans of song echoing round Twickenham here as this 67th tournament comes to a close. Well, as I said, Bill, let's hope we continue to see them in the blue jerseys because I don't think anyone would want them all to take on the all-black colours, though, of course, many of their top players do play in New Zealand very successfully and learn a lot from them there. So there, Malaki Ayupeli goes up to receive the Russell Cargill Trophy, presented by Dr J. A. Russell Cargill at the very first ever Middlesex tournament way back in 1926, presented there by Charles Madge, who is president of the Middlesex County Rugby Football Union, Western Samoa. Middlesex 7th champions of 1992.